Hi everyone, today we're making the Mary Knickers. It's a really simple two-piece knicker pattern with a floating gusset. Uh, it's a great entry-level piece if you're just getting used to knit fabrics and to elastics. And we're going to step you through step by step so you won't feel intimidated by anything and it's nice and easy. The Mary Knicker pattern is available as a PDF via the Measure Twice Cut Once pattern store. I'm going to add a link down below so you can grab your own pattern. It's available in sizes 6 to 30, so it's a good range, uh, suits lots of people, and I'm sure you're going to be finding you're going to make many, many more. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button so we know that to keep on making some more content for you. Thanks so much! Today we're making some cotton spandex knickers. I've chosen this Art Gallery Knits fabric. It's actually called Magic Fauna Waterfall. It's a nice and soft cotton spandex, a little bit of recovery to it. But what we're really looking for when it comes to fabrics for knickers in particular is something that's soft and is going to feel nice against the body. For Mary knickers, I've already got these ones cut out. They only have three pieces. A back, a front, and a cotton gusset. So very simple in terms of construction and a great pair to be your first pair of knickers that you've started making. One thing before we get started, we're going to make it easy to figure out which is the back and which is the front so that when you're sewing, you don't have to stop and recheck against your pattern. Taking two pins, put two pins together in your back panel. Taking a single pin, put a single pin in your front panel. I do this every time I sew and what it means is that every time I pick something up I know two pins equals back, one pin equals front. Saves a lot of time going back and forth between your pattern pieces and it just means it's a great habit to get to to speed up your sewing a little bit. Now that you've got your three pieces cut out you've got your pins marking your front and your back, we're actually going to pin the garment together. You can put your gusset to one side because it's used as a lining. It's actually not an extra piece you sew to the exterior of the garment. We're going to put the fabrics right sides together, matching from the top. We are going to pin down the side seam. So today I'm actually using some ballpoint pins. I happen to be using prim ones, but I know that there are other brands available. They're really great because much like a ballpoint needle, they don't pierce the fabric and make it snag or pull so it makes it nice and soft and smooth putting your pin through. And I know a lot of people have problems with their pinning and they think that it feels like it's snaggy on a knit fabric. Get yourself some ballpoint pins, it will go away. You also know that I am pinning things so that they are sitting outwards from the garment. So normally we see pins going along, today I'm going out. The reason I'm going out is I'm going to be using an overlocker or a serger if you're in America to actually sew these seams. You can sew them on your regular machine, but by using a serger or an overlocker today, I'm going to speed things up a little bit and it gives us a nice neat finish but it also means we want to be able to really clearly see our pins. So we're going to pin outwards to make that nice and easy for ourselves. So nice and simple. Side seams are all pinned. We're going to move across to the machines now and start stitching. We're just going to start with the gusset piece and what we're going to do is just finish the edges. So just feed it through. Make sure it sits nice. And And as always with your overlocker leave a nice long tail of thread. I've sewn this with a four thread so it's just gathering it ever so slightly mostly because I'm being lazy and I don't want to have to go from a three back to a four. If you trim your edges nice and close and pull, you'll notice that it locks off on its own little edge and that piece will be hidden inside your seam allowance. So you just pull and it locks. Really easy way to actually get rid 
of your extra threads. Now we're going to do the other side. So trim, smooth, pull, trim again. Oops, trim again. <laughs> And same for this side. Okay, now you can put your gusset piece away. Now we're going to put our first side seam underneath the machine. Make sure your edges are together right up the top. Knit fabrics get a little curly sometimes. It's the nature of the fabric. Sometimes the amount of humidity in the air increases the amount of roll, which is annoying when you live in a country like Australia and it can be very warm. Lower the presser foot. Here where you can see the actual uh, use of pinning outwards means it's very easy. Remove your pin. I've got a little magnetic pin bowl here I can pop things into. Stitch. Pull out your pin. Stitch. Take out your pin. Make sure those edges are smooth. And trim. Pull. Trim. We didn't take much off. It only has a seam allowance of a centimetre. And the stitch width of your overlocker is normally between 6 to 8 mil, depending on how wide you've actually got it set up. So you don't want to take off too much, just sort of a little bit, enough so that it makes it easy to catch in and so that your blade actually cuts some off. By allowing your blade to cut some off, you get a nice even edge. Okay, again. Always take out your needle, I mean, sorry, your pin before you get towards the blade. You do not want a pin going near overlock run it off trim pull trim again same at the top trim again get rid of your excess okay so your side seams are now done now we're going to move on to doing the crotch seam so here we have our crotch seam all pinned up you'll notice that the edges are nice and matched up but the center gets a little bobbly. It's because we're joining a convex and a concave curve. Once we set it underneath the machine, it will actually just straighten out on its own though. So again, lift up your foot, line up those edges so they sit nice and flat and aren't curling back on you. Stitch. If you were doing this on a regular machine you would just use your uh, jersey or a stretch or a ballpoint needle you would use your lightning bolt stitch or perhaps even a zigzag stitch to do all the seams exactly as I have with an overlocker and being a knit fabric it's not going to fray I have the overlocker it's already set up I like how neat it looks so I just choose to use this you can do it on a regular machine okay that's the crotch seam done We turn it around the right way, it's starting to look like a pair of knickers. Before we start to add the elastic, we're going to place the floating gusset in. So we're opening it up, we're going to push the seam allowance towards the back, so keep an eye out for those two pins that you put in earlier. And your gusset, the curved section goes towards the front, the flat section goes towards the back, and you'll notice that it's a little bit hard to show the curve of the leg matches the curve of the gusset. Once you've got it positioned in place so that the curves match on both leg pieces, take a pin and just pop it through the middle to hold it in place. And then we're going to ignore it while we put some elastic 
in the top edge. So I'm going to swap from my overlocker back to my regular sewing machine before we put in the elastic. Okay, so I've swapped back to my regular machine and I want to choose a straight stitch, but I'm going to make my straight stitch a little longer. Not as long as a gathering stitch, but just a little bit longer. Because so in our first, we're going to put on our elastic and our first pass we are going to use a straight stitch. Okay, so we've got our uh, fabric. This is the, the waistband. And this is our elastic. So you'll notice with the elastic, one side is plush, I'll try to get this in, and one side is not. You want the plush side facing up so that when it goes on the body, the plush side will sit next to you. I'm going to start at a side seam. Sorry, it's a little awkward to actually work around my lighting and filming rig here, but we'll get to it. All right. I'm just going to use my presser foot like an extra hand here while I explain. We want to line the top edge of our elastic with the top edge of our fabric. Our fabric's a little curly. You could pin it as you go. I find it easier not to pin, but I totally understand that you do want to. Just give yourself some room or maybe start and then pin. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up and I just need to shuffle a little bit. I want our straight stitch line to come right along here along the decorative edge. If you don't have a decorative edge, just aim close to the top. So I want it to be like within one to two mil. As it happens where my needle position is, it means I can line up this edge with this inside edge of my foot, which makes it nice and easy. Now, we're not going to put any tension into the elastic. We are not going to stretch our fabric. And we're just going to roll forwards a few stitches. Helps if I use the right foot pedal because I've just been using the overlocker and had to move and didn't move my feet pedal. Okay, now I'm ready. So a few stitches. I'm using a contrast thread so hopefully it's a little easier for you to see. I'm going to hit re reverse and just hit reverse one while I get set. This just anchors it, means we don't have to worry about the edge. Now little bit of tension. So relaxed, stretched, tension. You really just want it tension. Stretched means tight knickers, which means uncomfortable knickers. Tension. Okay, just a little bit. All right, so we're just going to get going. Now the foot wants to push it a little bit. That's fine. Just keep holding it back in place. And if you just go little bit by little bit, it means you can keep straightening out your fabric, lining up that top edge, adding a little bit of tension, and going long. Okay, so if I just pause there and I lift up, you can see we've started a little bit, we've come along, just along that edge, a little bit of tension, keep going. Basically, you just keep going around bit by bit. If you go bit by bit, it means you don't need to have to worry about measuring out the exact piece and then making of elastic and then making that exact length match. It means you can add the tension as to the elastic that you have in your stash or that you have purchased. Elastics do come in different strengths. If you use the one measurement for all elastics, you can on occasion end up with an elastic that is too loose or too tight, which again means uncomfortable. You don't want uncomfortable. All right, when you come to your side seam, push your side seam, the bulk of the side seam towards the back, line up, still add your little bit of tension over your side seam. going. So I'm going to keep going but I'm going to pause the video because uh, I think you've got the idea and then I'll bring it back once I'm back at the, si the side seam so you can see how I overlap the elastic. I've come around the back, I'm back at our original starting seam. I'm going to trim the edges. Oh no, no trimming on the back, that's good. What I want you to do is going to pull, I'm going to lay it over one over the other. I'm going to keep coming all the way along. 
I'm going to finish about here and then we're going to do a little bit of reverse. You could then cut it, which would mean you would end up with a raw edge like you do here. If you don't want a raw edge on the inside, what you can do is, okay, so if we add that much tension, we know we can cut it about here, which naturally is when you drop your scissors, always the way. All right, so we're going to cut. and gonna fold over a little, okay? So now we're gonna add in our tension so that it all lines up. Keep stitching, keep holding in your tension as you come to the side seam. Do not stretch your fabric. You just want your fabric to flow through your machine without any problems. All right, I'm just gonna slow down because it's getting a little bulky. Okay, so that's the edge of the fold. I'm going to hit my reverse, cut off. Okay, and you can see, once I do a little bit of trimming, the auto cut doesn't always work on my machine on elastic. I think it's just because it's a little dense. So you can see, nice and smooth kind of finish here. A few lays here, but that's going to be okay once we've done it in the uh, next pass. So that's the first pass. So again, you can see that stitch line in nice and close. And when you look at the garment overall, you can see that the elastic's added in some tension, but it doesn't look gathered. That's exactly what we want. Gathered knickers ended up looking like bloomers, which while cute, not the look we're going for on this one. Now that we have the elastic in, we're going to actually top stitch the elastic in place. So you'll notice the elastic's on the outside. We're going to flip it so that we can see our nice little decorative trim. We're going to top stitch along here. Because it's a knit fabric, we want to do it in a zigzag stitch. I've just chosen a regular zigzag stitch. So I'm going to place it in. And I always like to do my top stitching from the top side because it helps give me a nice straight line. It also means I get to determine the puff here. So, so you'll see it wants to roll towards the elastic. We want it to sit nice and flat and I always just find you can press it. Um, but I always just find that doing it with your fingers as you stitch is really easy. So I'm just going to get started. reverse and again work around my filming equipment to get this happening. Now it's starting it's a little bulky right here where there's the seam plus the joins of the actual elastic. So what I'm going to do lift my pressure foot, press the foot, lower it back down, make sure it's all going through okay the gentle tug at the back. Once it's flowing through and it's moving smoothly again, I stop pulling the fabric. I smooth this top edge down. And I start again. So here, when I'm stitching where my fabric meets my pico edge, I've got it lined up to again where the plastic meets the metal section of my actual press of foot. And I just let it glide through. You've already put tension into your elastic. You do not need to put tension in again. It's already taken care of. And you don't want to stretch your fabric. So you just let it flow through. And you get a nice little zigzag stitch, which makes it nice and flat. So I'm going to continue all the way around until I get back to the other end. And I'll come back and we can go on to the next step of how to finish off our knickers. So I've just finished going all the way around attaching the elastic with the zigzag and you can see nice flat zigzag. I've even used a contrast colour for you so you can see. And then if we look at the inside which is going to be, you can see the zigzag lines up nice and easy. So your elastic sits very very flat. A very flat elastic means that it's a much more comfortable to wear and also means that when you wash it, it doesn't do that rolling up thing that you sometimes get when uh, the elastic's only joined part way through. So comfort plus ease of washing has got to be a good thing. I'm just getting ready to 
pin up the legs uh, to hem the legs. But what I'm just doing in the meantime is I've added a few more pins to the gusset to hold it in place. And I'm going to go to the side seam. Make sure that our side seam is still pushed the same direction as the top. Fold it up. You want your hem allowance to be about 1, 1 1.2 centimetres. Because of the style of this knickers, you don't actually need any elastic in the bottom. Different uh, knicker styles have different elastic needs. I actually really like this style without the elastic. I find it very comfortable, but I always think it's nice to have variety in your knicker drawer as well because you don't want to wear the same pair all the time. Sometimes you want something a bit different or it suits a different style. So here you can see it's starting to curve because of the curvature of the leg. Just roll it so it sits nice and flat. Now you would measure this, making sure that your seam allowance stays the same the whole way around. Sorry, your hem allowance, not your seam allowance. But I am quite used to making these ones, so I am going to eyeball it in a little bit. And then once I've finished filming, I will double check with my wool line. So here, two pieces together and fold. So you can see you end up with this nice, neat edge. Oops, that one hasn't folded in correctly. Just tuck that in there. Okay. And pin. And we continue the whole way round until the leg's pinned up. And then we're going to do the other leg. On to the last step of our Mary Knickers. We're going to be finishing the leg openings. So I've got mine all pinned up. It's underneath the machine. There is actually a pin right here at the side seam. And what I like to do is line it up lower my presser foot and then take that pin out so the way I've got it lined up is I've just got like a fraction of the fabric on this side which means that as it zigzags I have a decent gap between the folded edge and where the zigzag line is going to be not only does this make your hem look nicer. If your zigzag is too close to the folded edge on your knickers it can be a little bit scratchy. So we want it in a little bit so we've got a little bit of smoothness right next to our leg. Okay. So again we're on a zigzag stitch. You could use a twin needle for this uh, section or if you've got a cover stitch machine you could certainly set up your cover stitch. Pull again a little bit of a pull to get past that seam. When I mean pull, it's not like a full-on stretch, it just gives it a little bit of a hand to go through. And then when you go through... Taking out your pins in plenty of time before you get to them. Now you'll notice I've taken the front off my machine so that I've got a narrower section here to sew with. The leg openings are quite small, taking this section out makes it a little easier. I go. Okay, so you'll just see, you can see the zigzag is looking nice and flat, good distance away from the actual edge, and catching the fabric on the underside. Okay, I'm going to go around and finish off this leg, and move on to the next one. So I'm doing the second leg opening. I'm actually closing it up with the zigzag seam like I have on this side. Now this is actually the crotch seam and you'll see here there's still one pin left which is actually holding our gusset in place. I've made sure the pin is nowhere near where my uh, presser foot is going to be and I like to leave it in right till the end because it just means things aren't going to move. But here the gusset and the outer edge have both been folded in together and you literally just keep stitching it in place together. Floating gussets aren't as common as they once were, but they are a really nice way to finish off fabrics. They're great for lace if you want a full lacy front, but still want like a nice bit of cotton through the gusset for a bit of comfort and ease, and also to add some longevity to your lace, because some laces can be a little holy and need a little bit of extra help. 
now I can feel that I am back just on my regular fabric. I don't have the gusset in there as well. And here are the finished Mary knickers. I popped them on the dummy so you can see how they look on the body a little bit better. Um, you can see the elastic sits nice and flat on the body. Nice and flat for your legs. Now as I said before, your legs you could zigzag, you can use a twin needle, you could use a cover stitch machine. It still has to stretch though because it is a stretchy point so it needs to be something other than a regular straight stitch. So have a look at that. Um, unfortunately the dummy's body is not exactly shaped like a, an actual human body so she's got a little bunching through the centre. Doesn't look like that on an actual body because they're shaped slightly differently. But it's the easiest way for me to show you what it looks like all finished up.